I had failed countless times to turn to the left when we exited your house. Armed with new chicken treats today, I thought I could send Angus to college where the sidewalks may likely be less icy. Despite the most concerted effort, Angus absolutely refused. He sat down, not wanting to budge, choosing to recline and be comfortable at the elementary school level. Angus chose to go through the neighbourhood, first depositing a handsome stool sample on his nemesis' front lawn. On the corner of Reith Road and Hay, we both were fascinated to see a collie sitting in the snow. It was in front of its house where a live Christmas tree had been discarded. I thought it was a statue or artwork until it moved its head ever so slightly. There were a lot of dog prints on the snow all around the front of that house, and Angus was very intent smelling it. Angus spotted the collie first, barked, and wanted to run towards a collie that was unfazed and just sat there watching us. Angus assertively led on roads that I never walked on before. He obviously knew the way and seemed like he was trying to go to the golf course. But there's no access through people's property. Through Barden Park, we got to the back of the preschool where Angus was aghast, looking at the children sled down the hill. Again, at this location, he was trying to get to the woods. Angus seemed so unaffected by the cold until we hit Exmouth and Glen, where I was wondering whether he was going to go to the woods near the organic grocery store or go to Ash Avenue. Then I saw his back leg was not weight-bearing. I stupidly touched it with my glove and he snarled and did one yelp bark. To calm him down, I cuddled him and held his head while with an ungloved hand held his paw till the snow melted. He was calm, and then he could walk again. But with that, I said an innumerable number of times, let's go home, let's go home. He agreed, and we went back via Ridge Road, although he was still fastidiously smelling everything and seemed quite happy. He began to increase his marking the closer we got home, including a second bowel movement on Sherry Street. I noticed it ended off with a little bit of the liquid. As you predicted, he went to the backyard and straight to his frisbee at the back door. With my protesting, he finally agreed to follow me to enter via the front door, where we had a short but fun game of tag. Bowls washed, fresh water replaced. I brought his blue blankie, thinking it might keep him warm, but he settled on his bed without it, loving harness scrubs and pats and he was 100% the four-star general jumping to attention and loudly fortifying the front door when Amazon dropped off a delivery. It's on the stairs. Then, as I went and sat next to his bed after complimenting him on his fantastic guard dog duty, he came and sat on top of me. Many times as I stopped patting as I'm doing this report, he would look at me. He had no problem with me touching his back paws. I see his whiskers go forward when I touch his front paws. Paws are not cold. His ears are a little cold when we returned. They are now warm and my foot has gone to sleep.